As in other forms of valvular heart disease, echocardiography is also very important in the management of patients with aortic regurgitation. You will see how important it is to follow these patients closely and to decide either whether or not patients should be operated and also to determine when the right time of operation has come. So the key point in the management of these patients is to operate them before irreversible myocardial damage has occurred. So keep that in mind when you monitor these patients. Symptoms usually occur when diastolic dysfunction occurs. In other words, when left atrial filling pressure rises, this is when they become symptomatic. Also keep in mind that these patients should have a hyperdynamic left ventricular function, simply because they have volume overload. So if they reach a near normal or normal left ventricular function, this can already mean that left ventricular function has deteriorated. So what do the guidelines say? Well, it's quite clear if the patients have symptoms. If they have symptoms, they have to be operated. But it's more difficult in the asymptomatic patient. First of all, it's always difficult to determine if someone is really asymptomatic, so we really have to question the patient and sometimes even perform functional tests. But if the patient is truly asymptomatic, we have to look at both the function and the size of the left ventricle. The cut value for operation is below 50% ejection fraction. And if we take a look at the size of the ventricle, end diastolic diameter of 70 millimeters and a systolic dimension of 50 millimeters or indexed to the body surface area of 25 millimeters uh, per square meter would be an indication for surgery. The reason we're so interested in left ventricular function is shown on this slide. If we have a preoperative left ventricular function, which is low, in this case below 35%, we have a poor outcome. In other words, the patients deteriorate with time and we did not help the patients, but we simply waited too long. So we have to operate them as long as left ventricular function is still normal. One thing which is very important to keep in mind in patients with aortic regurgitation and one thing which is different than in patients with mitral regurgitation is the fact that they have an elevated afterload. The reason is that the ejection of larger volumes of blood cause a higher impedance of the aorta. They also have an elevated peripheral vascular tone and the blood inertia and the viscoelasticity elasticity makes, uh, or causes an elevated afterload. And therefore, if we operate these patients, afterload will drop and we can actually assume that left ventricular function will improve after operation. This is also the reason why we have a cutoff value of a normal ejection fraction for operation, in other words, 50%, and not a supranormal left ventricular fraction ejection fraction as we, had in mit uh, as we have in mitral regurgitation. So, in summary, we can expect that a patient has an improvement in left ventricular function after surgery. This is in contrast to mitral regurgitation. But still, let us not wait too long. It's important to always uh, pursue the strategy of a watchful waiting. This is an example of a patient who had severe aortic regurgitation and who was successfully operated. Here is the short axis view of the left ventricle before the operation, dilated left ventricle, hyperdynamic function, and after the operation, the ventricle immediately returned to normal size and the function is still okay. Here on the bottom panel, the four chamber view, a very large left ventricle, and this is the same patient after the operation in the four chamber view. You can note that the size of the ventricle has returned to normal. So what happens at follow-up usually in these patients, the volumes drop after operation, the ejection fraction drops after operation to normal levels, hopefully, and the systolic pulmonary pressure also drops, especially if it was elevated before operation. This shows you an example of a typical time course of a patient. We have a patient who had aortic regurgitation, and in the following years, the size of the left ventricle gradually increased and then it increased to a point where surgery was performed and then after surgery we have a drop of the size of the left ventricle.
So left ventricular function is very important to determine if the patient should be operated. But in reality, it's not often so easy to really quantify left ventricular function. We have the Simpson method, which we can use. However, this can be difficult at times, especially if the patient has poor image quality. So very often we will need other modalities as well, such as MRI or scintigraphy and even stress echocardiography, which can help us to determine if the patient still has a contractile reserve. Another way of looking at left ventricular function is strain and strain rate imaging, which is a way of looking at the deformation of the left ventricle. The importance of strain and strain rate will be discussed in the chapter on newer technologies. But what do we do in patients who have a very poor left ventricular function? We know that these patients have an increased operative risk and that these patients might not benefit from aortic valve replacement. So if the ejection fraction drops to a value below 30 to 35 percent, we have to consider heart transplantation. Still, the decision is sometimes very difficult to make and we will often need other modalities, again, for example, stress echocardiography to test what the contractile reserve is. If patients have an indication for heart surgery for other reasons, for example, cabbage or aortic aneurysm or mitral valve operation, then we have to be more liberal with respect to if we should also perform aortic valve replacement. In that case, aortic regurgitation should be at least or could be at least moderate to justify replacement. In these instances, we always have to consider the age of the patient because if the patient is young, he will still uh, expect to suffer from the sequels of regurgitation. And also we have to look at the operative risk because we are performing a more extensive cardiac surgery in this case where we also replace the aortic valve and therefore the risk of surgery will also increase. So you see, even though there are clear guidelines to when to operate these patients, in reality it's often not that easy to really determine the exact time point of surgery. On the one side, we have to operate them before the left ventricle uh, suffers from deterioration. On the other side, we have to operate the patient as late as possible to keep them away from a prosthetic valve, which also has a number of complications.